So here we are with part two on the, the lecture in ancient Rome, which is lecture number 14. Um, and this is part two of that. So we just finished up with the relief sculpture. This is high relief. Notice that people are actually sticking out from the, from the edge and things are coming out quite a bit. So as opposed to bas relief, which would be more like this coin, right? Of a low relief. Um, the Roman Empire enjoyed a long period of peace and prosperity referred to as the Pax Romana or Roman peace. Augustus and subsequent leaders incorporated mentions of peace into coins and works of art, moving away from a period where war and victory was glorified in displays of public art. In 330 CE, which is the current era, um, the Emperor Constantine decided to move the capital of the Roman Empire to a new city. After deliberation, Constantine chose the site of Byzantium, which was a city originally founded by the Greeks. The site was chosen to reflect the importance of the eastern portion of the Roman Empire and for its str strategic location between the Mediterranean and Black Sea and nearer to Egypt, the Danube River, and the Near East. So here's the little creation key we've got uh, for, for the important uh, Roman works of art. The House of Veti, we got, we were at uh, 300 to 200 BCE. Head of a Roman patrician, 75 to 50 BCE. Augustus of Prima Porta, 20 CE. Um, the Colosseum, which is the Flavian Amphitheater. We've got 72 to 80 CE, the form of Trahan, 110 CE, um, the Pantheon, eight, 118 to 125 CE, and the Lud Ludovici Battle Scarcophagus is 250 CE. Um, the Pompeii, Pompeii was a city located near the Bay of Naples that was destroyed by the uh, eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 of the current era. Volcanic ash buried the city, preserving it forever in a moment of time. Um, some of the best preserved Roman homes, paintings, and other works of art are discovered at, that site of, at the site of Pompeii and other cities in towns destroyed by the eruption of Mount Vesuvius, including Herculaneum, uh, and these sites provide a great wealth of information on what Roman li life was really like. Um, the House of Veti, here its location in Pompeii, approximately 300 to 200 BCE. The materials are cut stone and fresco. So these are frescoed paintings that's on wet plaster. The House of, of Veti was owned by two brothers, Aluis Vetius, Convivia and a Louis Vettius resist, Resistuitus, um, who were freedmen, formerly enslaved persons who had become free. The two brothers became very successful merchants, and the house of Vetti was one of the largest and most opulent of all of ancient Pompeii. The House of Vetti did not have exterior windows, which contributed to the privacy of the, of the residents. Instead, natural light came from open an open air atrium at the center of the house. The entrance of the house was narrow as it was located between stores in the city. The entrance opened into an atrium area that featured an in pluvium, a basin for collecting rainwater, and several cub, cub, uh, I'm sorry, cubicula or bedrooms. Um, a peristyle garden in the rear of the house featured statues and fountains. The House of the Vetti features a large assortment of fresco paintings in what was referred to as the Pompeian Fourth Style. These paintings were created following an, an earthquake which impacted Pompeii in 62 of the current era. There are 12 surviving panels which depict mythological scenes. There's the interior view of the atrium um, to the peristyle. Many of the largest frescoes were located in the Triclinum, 
or dining room of the house. The frescoes on the house in the house of Vetti are notable for some of the best examples of Roman painting and fresco making. So this is the head of a Roman patrician. Um, the location is Ortriculi, Italy, 75 to 50 BCE. It's made of marble. Um, one of the interesting things about the Romans, of course, and I'm sure you read this in the book, is they were the first to actually make portraits of people. And the individual became more important than the idealized look that the Greeks and the other, um, the uh, Etruscans and Minoans all had more of idealized features in their sculpture and their paintings. Um, the Greeks, I mean, and the, the Romans actually did portraits of people, which was unusual. Um, so this is the uh, an excellent example of the veristic style of Roman sculpture. The style was extremely realistic and so was even often unflattering. The wrinkles and signs of aging are apparent in this bust and in other examples of veristic sculptures. The realism in Roman sculpture was likely influenced by Hellenistic Greek sculpture, which emphasized more natural expressions and fluidity. The signs of aging in the sculpture could have been interpreted as evidence of wisdom and experience. The pinching of the, feature, of the figure's brows could suggest tenis, tenacity and fortitude. Um, this is Augustus of Prima Porta. Its location is in Rome, Italy, and the date is 20 CE, and the materials are marble. The Augustus of Prima Porta is a full-length portrait statue of Augustus Caesar, the first emperor of the Roman Empire. The statue was discovered during... Um, archaeological excavations at the Villa of Livia, owned by Augustus' third wife, Livia Drusilla, in Prima Porta, the er an area of Rome. There is evidence that the sculpture was originally painted brightly in several colors, which is what we know already. Augustus, is, did, did, Augustus did not wish to be depicted as a god, but the sculpture is still highly idealized. Augustus is depicted barefoot, which con conveniently, uh, which con conventionally to this time was chiefly used in Roman depictions of deities. The sculptor is barefoot. That the sculptor is barefoot might suggest that Augustus is standing on sacred ground. The Cupid and dolphin located near the sculptor's right, right, left, um, or right foot, I mean, suggest uh, a divine descent from the goddess Venus, as well as the naval battle that led to Augustus's victory of Mark Antony and Cleopatra. The sculptor's breastplate containing, contains imagery that suggests the gods are aligned with Augustus. Uh, this is the Colosseum, Colosseum the Flavian, Flavian Amphitheater. Its location is Rome. Um, it's made of stone and concrete and uh, was 72 to 80, whoops, I didn't mean to go that far go back, um, was uh, right there, 72 to 80 current era, okay? So here we have uh, the Colosseum. It's the largest ancient amphitheater ever constructed. The construction began under the Emperor Vespasian and was completed in, 80, in year 80 um, current era under his successor and heir, Titus. Further modifications were made during the reign of Domitian. These three emperors belonged to the Flavian dynasty, and so the amphitheater is sometimes referred to as the Flavian Amphitheater. The name Colosseum is attributed to the first, uh, first to the 6th century current era and refers to a large sculpture that once was located near the amphitheater. Um, here's an interior view of the Colosseum, as it currently is. Um, remember that, that this area we're, we're looking at was underneath the floor of the Colosseum. It was like the underneath. There's an aerial view. It's huge, right? It could hold an estimated 50,000 to 80,000 spectators at various points in its history, averaging an audience of around 65,000. That's huge. The amphitheater was constructed to hold large events, ceremonies, and entertainment spectacles. It was the location of the reenactment of major Roman battles and public executions, as well as gladiator matches between opponents and animals. 
Gladiators were prisoners of war or volunteers who sought fame and fortune. The Colosseum was a major feat of engineering and construction. It was made possible by advances in engineering technology and the use of arches, barrel vaults, and groin vaults to support the structure and form the amphitheater's 76 entrances. The Colosseum <clears throat> had multiple tiers adorned with capitals from a diverse range of artistic styles, Tuscan, Ionic, Corinthian, flattened Corinthian. Um, Flagstaffs at the top of the Colosseum supported a canvas roof that shielded the crowd from the sun. The Colosseum was once faced with marble, but most of the marble facing was removed during the Middle Ages and used for other building projects. Um, here's the form of Trajan. It's located in Rome, uh, 10, 110 of the current era, and it's built with brick, marble, and concrete. The Emperor Trajan ruled from 98 to 117 current era. Trajan expanded Rome's borders to their furthest extent and was well liked for his military accomplishments and for the prosperity he brought to Rome. The form of Trajan was the last major form built in ancient Rome and was constructed to commemorate Trajan and his military accomplishments. The form complex consisted of a piazza square, a ceremonial column, market and basilica. The, this forum complex was funded by war treasures secured by Trajan's victory over the, the Decians who lived in the area of modern Romania. Here's the main plan of the, of the forum of Trajan. You see it's pretty extensive. Gold coin commemorating the construction of the forum of Trajan. Right, this is some of their propaganda, they're advertising their accomplishments. Notice the bas-relief sculpture. And the large statue of Trajan riding a horse originally decorated the middle of the Forum Piazza Square. Commemorative coins minted at the time provide a sense of the square's layout and, and this statue. I'll take a quick look back. You can see where the statue is there. Um, the Basilica Ulpia constructed in the complex was a large column interior space for courts and galleries. A massive timber roof spanning 80 feet served as the Basilica's ceiling. The market of Trajan was a very large market area with multiple layers and vast interior spaces that once was the location of over 100 stores. Trajan's column is a large freestanding triumphal column located in the forum of Trajan complex that commemorates Trajan's victory over the Decians. It was probably constructed under the supervision of the architect Apollodorus of Damascus at the order of the Roman Senate. It was completed in 113 CE. Um, the column is most famous for its spiral relief, which artistically represents the wars between the Romans and Dacians. Its design has inspired numerous victory columns. You can see them fighting. There's a dead person down on the ground there. Um, the Pantheon is located in Rome, um, approximately 118 to 125 current era. Um, concrete with stone facing is the construction. Um, it, the Pantheon was designed to be a, monu a monument honoring all gods. The name Pantheon refers to this. Um, the inscription across the frieze says, Marcus Agrippa, son of Lucius, consul thrice, commissioned it. The temple, um, the temple Marcus Agrippa commissioned burned down, and the emperor Hadrian rebuilt the Pantheon with this original dedication. The exterior of the Pantheon has Greek facade elements, including a porch, pediment, Corinthian column capitals, and frieze. The interior of the Pantheon reflects Roman architecture. Here's the interior dome of the Pantheon. Pretty cool, isn't it? Um, almost 2,000 years later, after it was built, the Pantheon's dome still is the world's largest unreinforced concrete dome. The height of the oculus and the diameter of the interior circle are the same. 
The Pantheon is one of the best preserved of all ancient Roman buildings. It is in large part because it has been in continuous use throughout its history. Since the seventh century, the Pantheon has been in use as a church dedicated to St. Mary and the martyrs. Ludofici battles Scarcophagus. Its location is, is in Rome, um, 250 to 260 CE, and it's made of marble. Um, this Scarcophagus is notable for its densely populated, visually confusing composition of suffering and highly emotional Roman and Goth soldiers engaged in battle. The carved relief depicts Roman soldiers as civilized. They are clean shaven and yield intricate armor uh, and weapon. In contrast, the Goths are depicted as barbarians. They are bearded and unarmed. The style of the sculpture is highly unique in Roman art up to this point. It forgoes classical conventions and depicts the confusion of battle and war. <clears throat> art historians also believe this work reflects the time period it was created in. Rome was beginning to decline and, and faced constant threats from Germanic and Goth invaders. Roman art and architecture had a tremendous influence both during the time of the Roman Republic and long after. This look familiar? The early Republic of the United States looked to Roman conventions and artistic styles in early public buildings. The founders of the U.S. drew from democratic concepts established in the Roman Republic, including an elective Senate, the veto, a system of checks and balances, and the concept of citizenship. The Capitol building in Washington, D.C. was named after the Roman Capitolium, the temple dedicated to the three supreme gods of the Roman state, Jupiter, Juno, and Minerva. The design of the Capitol building evokes Roman architecture with Corinthian capitals and a large dome. The U.S. Supreme Court is sometimes referred to as the Temple of Justice. Its architecture heavily draws from the design of Roman temples. A number of sculptures and friezes, many of which evoking Roman and classical figures are featured throughout the Supreme Court complex. Roman influence extended to sculpted traditions and iconography. The, sculpted, the sculptural bust on the left depicts Benjamin Franklin in a Roman style wearing a toga. The motto of the United States, E Pluribus Unum, out of many, one, is Latin. <clears throat> 